Well, June is Pride Month, but some families in Kentucky are feeling anything but. The passage of Senate Bill 150, dubbed the worst anti-trans bill in the nation, is set to take effect on June 29th. It bans health care providers from performing gender-affirming care for transgender children, including prescribing drugs that delay, stop, or alter puberty, among other things. ABC 36's Erica Bivens talked to one family who says they're moving because of it in this ABC 36 exclusive. Well, the ripple effects of Senate Bill 150 already seen and felt by those who live here. While the bill is set to take effect later this month, the ACLU of Kentucky has filed a lawsuit seeking a preliminary injunction to block part of the controversial bill from going into effect. While the group's hopeful the injunction will be granted, one family we talked to who wishes to remain anonymous says it's too late and they've already made the decision to find another state more accepting. Connor is our son. He is a F to M transgender. He's uh, playful, uh, he loves to run around, loves to go outside, uh, just all around, just normal kid. Mark says Connor was born a girl, but around the age of four started sharing an inner struggle. At bedtime, I would often ask Connor questions like, so is there anything you want to tell me? How was your day going? Things like that. And uh, Connor started saying things like, I feel like a girl on the inside, but a boy on the outside. We weren't dismissive, but we were sort of quiet about it the first couple times. But it became sort of a common thing, maybe once a month, then maybe once a week. And, and so that's sort of how we discovered. Now seven, Mark says Connor doesn't want to be transgender. He just wants to be a boy. But Senate Bill 150 prevents that. You know, what specifically do you take issue with? So doctors in Kentucky will lose their license if they treat my son affirmingly. So that means we have to travel across state lines to get medicine. Now, when we talk about medicine, we're talking specifically about the puberty blockers, correct? Yes, puberty blockers. So this would obviously come kind of down the line. Yes. Uh, is that something that you've already looked at? Uh, no. Uh, what would start rather soon, because uh, Connor is seven, is regular blood tests to see if puberty has started. That could, you know, that could happen as early as maybe eight. It could be 11 or 12 before you need to think about any medication. But just doing those blood tests for that purpose would be gender affirming care, which is prohibited. Mark says the law, which would prevent Connor from being able to transition, has now forced them to leave their home. We have to uproot our family. I was born and raised in Kentucky, and I don't want to leave, but I can't stay. Illinois is the closest state that has affirming and supportive laws. And Mark says they're not the only ones. I know of people that are moving. I know people who want to move but can't move. And that's really the saddest part is when you don't have a choice, where you have to stay in a place that doesn't want you. While the battle in court continues for families like Mark's, he can't help but wonder why. What do you want to say to lawmakers? Why us? Why transgenderism? Like, what is so wrong about it? What do you hope to accomplish, not only by talking to us, the news and the media, but also what do you hope viewers kind of take away from all of this? That Connor's just a kid, you know? As a parent, you have one job, love your kid. That's your only job. And if your kid's telling you something over and over and over again, if you love them, you believe them. As we await a decision in court, LGBTQ plus groups across the state want people to know there are resources available to transgender kids and their families. We've shared those with you in this web story at WTVQ.com. Erica Bivens, ABC 36 on your side.